Today's video is about Michael Burry, who is often called a broken clock by the market experts. This is due to a very specific reason because historically, Burry has made money from market crashes. You would be surprised to know that while Nasdaq is down 30% from highs, Michael Burry has earned 43% return on his investments. Even when S&P 500 crashed in 2001, the portfolio of Burry was up by 55%. Whereas in general financial crisis of 2008, Burry was able to make $800 million by shorting the market and later this move was immortalized in a movie called The Big Short. I highly recommend you to watch that movie. In June 2021, Burry tweeted that currently the market is in the phase of greatest speculative bubble of all times and he is expecting a huge crash. Since last year, the market has been crashing and to date, there has been a huge decline of around 30% and there is no end in sight. This video is about how Burry has been able to make millions in the recent market crash and what investors should know about the future of market. But before going into details, just a quick request to like the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more informative videos like these. Enjoy watching. Burry is of the view that this crash is just a start. He proclaims that the market will decline by over 50% from current level in the days to come. Historically, Predictions made by Michael Burry regarding crashes have been spot on. He has been early to every prediction and interestingly, he has been right so far. He made his recent prediction about market correction during the late 2021 and the way market is performing right now is a clear reflection of his forecasts. His predictions were based on the expected high inflation, crashing growth stocks, crashing bond prices and overall market correction. Burry recently tweeted, habitually be one to two years early on literally everything, and you can attain broken clock status. One of the major reasons why Burry has been so successful in predicting market crashes is due to his belief on the predictable nature of humans. Although the technology has evolved over time, but human nature is still the same. Burry recently tweeted, third time's a charm, 10 years leading to a financial crisis, yellow S&P 500 2000, why doesn't Peep 500 today? Green Dow 1929 got to love human nature. Nothing if not consistent. The menu of technology stocks in 2000 had all the ingredients for a roller coaster ride from boom to bust. During the dot com bubble, the world witnessed unprecedented stock rallies of technology stocks, which increased by 1000 or even 2000%, and then crashed significantly. During this time, the Roaring Twenties witnessed ridiculous speculation. The prices of the stocks quadrupled during the span of only nine years. During this time, the investors and even the analysts were quite convinced that the stock prices will keep on pumping. But what happened was quite the opposite. According to Burry, the market might be able to revive in the short run, but he is confident that the market will crash in the coming year or two. In simple words, Burry is of the view that the stock market might show some resistance to beers in the short run, and some recovery might be witnessed. However, this should not be considered as a signal of long-term recovery. To justify his predictions, Burry tweeted, Dead cat bounces are the most epic. 12 of the top 20 Nasdaq one-day rallies happened during the 78-person drop from 2000's top. 9 of the top 20 S&P 500 one-day rallies happened during the 86-person drop from the 1929 top. Although, his tweet is based on facts. However, this statement is quite decisive and intriguing. The literal meanings of this tweet point towards a correlation which could be misleading. Let me explain it to you. If we think deeply, his statement posits that most rallies are witnessed in the market during long-term market crashes, and it is backed by quite frightening fundamentals. Everybody knows and accepts that markets are directly associated with macroeconomical fundamentals, and right now, the macroeconomic condition of the US is quite horrific. Some economists are of the view that Ukraine-Russia war situation is on the brink of a collapse, while others are of the view that interest rates of the bond market are plunging, which increases the cost of capital for business. The real GDP of the country has decreased by 1.5% in the first quarter of 2022. All these factors are pointing towards an economic crash if true. However, according to Burry, the most important factor that distorts the economy of a country is consumers. It is advocated that consumers drive the economy. If the consumers feel weak, this has direct impact on the consumption patterns of the consumers and these consumers can drag down the economy at any point of time. 
Here are some facts. The personal consumption expenditures, PCE, were 70% of GDP in 2019, and however, these have increased to 90% as of March 2023. Currently due to high oil prices, unemployment and most importantly, historical high inflation, the purchasing power of the consumers has decreased significantly. Whereas, as per planning and progress study, the personal savings have dropped by 15% in the first quarter of 2023, which sounds alarming. Now, keeping in view the current situation, as per Burry, if the consumers stop spending and start saving, the economy will fall apart. In this context, Burry said that last 18 months, eight fifty billion billion in direct stimulus checks, $400 billion in cash out refinancing, one plus trillion dollars in forgivable loans, 250 to 500 billion dollars of it fraudulent, another four trillion dollars indirect, etc. What recapitalizes the consumer now? Higher wages can't do that. According to Burry, during the course of the last year and a half, the US families increased their wealth by taking advantage of stimulus checks, cash out refinancing offers, forgiven loans, and other forms of indirect economic help. Burry proclaims that increasing people's salary will not be sufficient to safeguard their savings and shield them from incurring inflation. If wealth of consumers decreases, it is possible that they may spend less money, which will have a chilling effect on the economy. This lower purchasing is not just anecdotal. In fact, the data confirms that currently the consumers are weaker than ever. The Consumer Sentiment Index is at the same level as it was during the global financial crisis of 2008. Burry tweeted, And so Amazon says to GDP, there is your weakening consumers. The consumers have already decreased their spending patterns. This can be testified through the first quarter results of Amazon, where operating income decreased to $3.7 billion in comparison to $8.9 billion in first quarter 2021. Whereas, the company witnessed a net loss of $3.8 billion. Now, coming to the main purpose of this video, how Burry is able to make millions in current situation, and whether investors like you can earn too. Predicting this will happen, Burry is making millions by shorting bonds. During 2021 and late 2022, Burry revealed that he's shorting 30 years bonds. He tweeted, For what it's worth, I've never shorted any cryptocurrency. This is my third bubble, and the biggest. I've learned a thing or two. 30 years treasuries, on the other hand. Burry's decision to short bonds may be easily explained by the fact that inflation was nearing 7% and 30-year bond rates were at 2%, and now once again, inflation is rising. This meant that bondholders may expect an annual loss of around 5% to 4% for the foreseeable future. Because of their inverse relationship, Bond prices fall as yields increases. Burry has already purchased TBT, an ultra-short 20-plus-year Treasury Exchange-traded fund, ETF, traded on the ProShare Exchange. Specifically, TBT is a bond-shorting exchange-traded fund. Rising interest rates, inflation, and the ongoing situation in Ukraine all contributed to a substantial increase in bond yields during the last several months. Since Burry's first disclosure of a short position, the price of TBT ETF has surged by 43%. This is already a considerable sum, but Burry anticipates earning considerably more in the future. Recently, Burry tweeted, 1977 says hello, with a picture of himself in 1977. The tweet made reference to the economic climate of the 1970s, a period known as the Great Inflation. By 1980, the inflation rate had risen to more than 14%, from its 1977 level of 6.5 percent. Current economic situation of the U.S. is quite similar to that of late 70s. Current inflation based on consumer price index is around 8 percent, but Burry believes that it has already surpassed 10 percent and might reach to even 15 percent. Burry is skeptical regarding the CPI calculation. He justified his criticism in the following manner. CPI says housing costs rose 5% last 12 months. Wrong. CPI would be 12% using real-world NAR housing data. BLS has smoothed out housing numbers forever because home prices have been a problem forever. So next month, they will start smoothing out vehicle prices. Burry says that CPI's house prices are wrong. According to the CPI, 
home prices only grew 5% in the last year. However, if house prices were based on genuine data, CPI inflation would be 12%, so the 8% inflation figure is wrong by 4%. This error and other macro variables will lead the market to drop by almost 55%. Burry explained how there were. Paradigm shift speculative peaks, SP500 bottom 13% lower than 2002's bottom in 2009, 17% lower than 1998's LTCM crisis low in 2002, and 10% lower than 1970's low in 1975. 15% lower than the COVID low is SPX 1862, Schiller PE of 16, nominal PE of 9 in historic range. Assuming this trend persists, the S&P 500 will fall to a level that is slightly lower than the COVID collapse. Burry uses 15% as an example to see whether this is fair in theory. If the S&P 500 were to fall 15% below its previous low during COVID, the index would reach about 1800 points. This is about 55% lower than the current levels. The Schiller price to earnings ratio through time is seen on one of the graphs that Burry added to his tweet. The Schiller PE ratio is a cyclically adjusted PE ratio, which implies that it adjusts for inflation. Currently, Schiller PE ratio is 36. This ratio would reduce to around 16 if there were a collapse of 55%, which is comparable to the historical average. In addition to that, he provided graphs that demonstrated the historical average of nominal P.E. ratio of the most recent 12 months, which is currently 21. It is expected in response to the crash, this ratio will decrease to 9, which although is lower than average, but Burry thinks it is reasonable. All of this lends credence to his predictions that the suffering would continue for some time. There are investors who believe that short-term market collapses are irrelevant, which is true if you're able to withstand the emotional strain of seeing your portfolio take a significant hit. Even the most successful businesses have witnessed their crashes and long-term gains. Amazon is a good illustration of this phenomenon at the height of the dot-com boom. Burry questioned, How far can the stock of a good growing company fall? One destined to be one of the greatest companies in the world? Burry tweeted, Remember, when Amazon fell 95%, but the Fed? But the Fed didn't have inflation like this hanging over its head then either. If you don't have the capacity to maintain this conviction that a stock might drop by 95%, then you must pack your bags. Stock market investment is not for you. You always face short-term volatility in the stock market, and it always tests the emotions of the investors, and it is very difficult to control your emotions. Keep in mind, that Michael Burry is not a financial advisor. He's simply a hedge fund manager who would profit significantly if market crashed.